The webinar will begin shortly. Please remain on the line. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good day, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for taking part of your training day to be with us here. Would you please send me a message, a, a, a why that says that you are being able to hear me so I can continue? Thank you very much. I can see many whys already. Okay. Today I'm going to go back to basics because we have a good number of new members both for the F500 and for the oil barrel and it's important to understand how our indicators and setup works so you can be successful in the market. Since both indicators function similarly, I will start by explaining the two types of trade setups and if we have time the different type of indicators. By the two types of setup, I mean trades that go with the trend and reversal trades. In order to do that, I need to make sure you understand what the trend is. My idea is that if you can understand the trend and identify the trend in different time frames with its different phases, you will be able to discern what strategy is the most appropriate one to apply. Sadly, many of you have been with us for years and have not yet understood the concept that one size fits all does not apply to trading. So let's start by understanding the trend and the different phases of the trend from different perspectives, starting with the traditional Dow theory. Charles Dow, in his theory, divided trends into primary, secondary, and minor trends. Primary trends last for more than a year and may extend for several years, so long as each successive rally reaches a higher level than the previous one, and each secondary reaction stops at a higher level than the previous reaction. The Dow theory called this a bull market, or better known as an uptrend. In simple words, an uptrend is defined as a series of higher highs and higher lows. Conversely, when each decline carries prices to successively lower levels and each recovery fails to bring them back up to the top level of the preceding rally, the primary trend is down and is known as a bear market. Again, in simple words, a series of lower lows and lower highs is a downtrend. The primary trend is the only one with which long-term investors are concerned because, well, because it lasts, at least theoretically, from one to several years. Obviously, the long-term investors, they want to buy at the least expensive price, in a bull market of course, and hold without concern for secondary or minor trends. You've heard that a million times, I'm sure, the, the big secret of the biggest millionaires to buy and hold. That happens when you are in a, in a bull market. Now, what are secondary trends? The secondary trends are the important reactions that interrupt the progress of prices in the primary direction. In a bull market, they are the intermediate declines that we often call corrections, retracements, or pullbacks. Now, according to the Dow theory, secondary trends last from three weeks to many months, and, well, rarely longer. 
Now, one interesting clue that the Dow theory gives us is that the decline in secondary trends is expected to retrace from one-third to two-thirds of the gain in a bull market. Obviously, the opposite applies to bear markets, meaning that the rallies in bear markets are expected to rise one-third or two-thirds of the decline. This is important to keep in mind because it can help with the setups if you're trading with a trend, and also it can help you if you are adding to your positions, or it can help you also, also with your stop placement. Just for simplicity, let's continue talking about bull markets. That way I don't have to be repeating the same concept inverted for bear markets. Also, you will see the similarities of the Dow theory with the Elliott wave theory in a moment. For now, let's be aware that in a bull market, if prices rally, say, 30 points, the declines will not be less than 10 points, and usually no more than 20 points. However, keep in mind that those are only guidelines, albeit strong ones, if you will, but they are just guidelines. In other words, they are not written laws or anything like that. And finally, the minor trends are typically made of three waves, and they last less than the three weeks of the secondary trends. For the Dow theory, or rather from the Dow theory point of view, minor trends are meaningless. Now, I must clarify some, something. The Dow theory was developed as a barometer of general business trends and not as a trading system and not as a forecast system. However, it helps us to understand what trends are and in what direc direction we prefer to trade. Now, I mentioned that we were going to examine trends from different perspectives. So let's see a simple way to define trend without much subjectivity, the mathematical way. If we simply place a moving average and observe the direction of its slope, we can also define where the trend is. Keep that in mind because by using a simple moving average, you may save yourself some troubles. For, in for instance, um, at the end of that um, slide that you have there, you have higher highs and higher lows. And would you say that's a, 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 an uptrend? Well, you can argue with the low trend that precedes that. So the easiest way to define it, at least in practical use, is probably by using a moving average. Now, lastly, let's see how the Elliott wave theory would define a trend. And I must say that without a single doubt for me, the easiest and safest way to identify the trend is by using Elliott wave patterns. I recognize that Elliott wave patterns are not that easy, but, but once you recognize them, that's really the safest way to recognize a, a trend. Why? Well, simply because it is the easiest and most effective way to identify uh, where the direction. Because Elliott observed that there are only two types of waves, motive waves, that move in the direction of the trend, and corrective waves. Those are the ones that move in the opposite direction of the trend. Now, motive waves subdivide into five, while corrective waves subdivide into three. That makes it extremely easy, because if you see anything that subdivides into three waves, you know that it's a corrective wave, meaning that the trend will continue going in the opposite direction. Very simple. If we can count five waves in one direction, we know that the trend is in that direction. And conversely, conversely, if we can only count three waves in a particular direction, and especially, and especially if those three waves are contained within parallel lines, we know that no matter how long that move is taking, it is corrective in nature. Now, if you can understand that, you will be miles and miles ahead in your game. Whenever you see a move that could be counted in three, when typically in Elliott Wave we use ABCs to count, to, to label those uh, counter trend moves. But if you can only count it in three, let's say ABC, and it can be contained with a parallel line just as you have in front of you, you know you have a correction and the trend 
may continue in the opposite direction and that helps you tremendously because at least you know in what direction to trade. Remember how the Dow theory tells us that the minor trends are typically in three as well? Believe me, I've seen even experienced traders who are not aware of this simple rule and fall into the trap of confusing the main direction of the trend for not recognizing that the move was in three and contained within parallel lines. Now, if that correction, which is in three, reaches a third or two-thirds retracement of the previous move, then you have a trade set up in front of you. Now, let's keep something important in mind here. I said a trade set up. A trade set up is not a green light to buy or sell. For that, you need a trigger. And it is exactly there when it is appropriate to use both the F500, if we are trading the indices, of course, or the oil barrel, if we are trading oil as a trigger. Let's use again the Elliott model as an example. You can see there, there are five waves up. One, two, three, four, five. Wave two will be a setup. Not a trigger, but a setup. Particularly knowing that the guidelines of Elliott state that wave two tend to be deep and retrades a 0.618 distance travel by wave one. So that we have a perfect clue, we have a perfect setup. Wave four are also trade setups, particularly knowing that the guidelines of Elliott state that wave four tend to retrace 0.382 of the distance travel by wave three. Notice these two examples are just setups. They don't tell us where the uh, where the trigger is, where should we enter the market if we're buying there? Should we enter at the bottom? How do we know it's the bottom? Should we enter uh, a little bit higher? How do we know the bottom is stopped? So we need a trigger. Now notice the similarity with the Dow theory that teaches us to expect one-third or two-third retracements in secondary waves. Notice that for wave two we have the two-thirds and for for Wave four, we have one third. Now, again, those are only setups. The trigger part comes when the indicator gives you the entry by aligning the colors of the bar, footprint, and arrow. Of course, I'm talking particularly of these two indicators, the F500 or the oil barrel. This is an aspect that has to do with the phases of the trend. Dow, Charles Dow, divides the trend in three phases. The first phase is the phase known as accumulation. I'm sure you have heard the terms of accumulation and distribution before many, many times. During the accumulation phase, investors sense that the market is due to turn up. Then financial reports are really bad possibly at their worst during that phase. The majority of traders and the public are all discouraged because the market has been coming down hard. And probably they are even out of the market. Volume is very low, but every time there is a minor advance, it increases a little bit. Elliot called this phase wave one. The second phase is where it starts to attract attention to most investors. During the second phase is where the market travels the farthest in the shortest amount of time and most traders make their best profits. Elliot called this phase wave three. And when we are able to identify this phase, then we can apply our particular setup that we call EBO. In other words, e -B or, in other words, that means um, evolution, um, and, um, oh my goodness, I forgot, evil breakout, that's what it means. Okay, so the second phase, according to Dao, is what Elliot called wave three. Everybody is familiar with wave three because, well, wave threes are the most potent, right? Now, the third phase is when everyone's, everyone wants to take part in those profits. 
people see that that market is going particularly well and they they don't want to stay out they want to to take advantage of it they don't want to be left out all financial news are great and the papers and the magazines start talking about the great opportunities that that particular market is offering particularly in the stock market and here is when you start receiving emails from all these guys that want to sell you their great opportunity alerts and they tell you what stocks to buy and what not. Of course, by then, the market has run its course and it may be more appropriate to sell than to buy. This is the phase where the indicators do not confirm the rallies of price. And then we see divergences where price are going up, but the indicators which are based on that price turns down. And we call that divergence. That happens at the end of this particular phase. And yes, I know I may be confusing you a little bit, but bear with me because little by little it will all make sense. The reality is that the small efforts to understand this um, simple aspect of trading is utterly important because your entire success using the F500 or the oil barrel indicator hangs on being able to recognize the, the direction of the trend and applying the proper setup. However, to avoid confusions and simplify things, let's summarize what we have been talking about. Okay? So I made a, a summary um, slide for you. One, we define the trend as a series of higher highs and higher lows for an uptrend and a series of lower lows and lower highs for a downtrend. Two, we recognize that trends are interrupted by countertrend movements, which now identify as secondary trends and then are called corrections. Three, based on that, we can identify two types of, of trade setups, trading in the direction of the trend and reversal trades. Four, we know that to identify countertrend moves, we can use parallel lines as shown in the, in the slide before. And five, we know that we can expect countertrend moves to retrace one or two thirds of the distance traveled by the main trend. The six I just added because we usually call sideways move uh, to when the trend is not going either up nor down, and that is actually a counter trend move that can typically be contained between uh, parallel lines. Okay, now we have some clarity about trends. So let's now examine the charts and see some of our trading strategy. The reality is that in the F500 program, we have taught you dozens of strategies for counter trend moves and a few uh, trend following strategies. So let's examine now one of my favorite setups for the oil barrel, what we call the F, uh, not the F, the 5K strategy. We call it the 5K strategy simply because um, just a second so I can show my my chart. Okay, you should have my chart in front of you now. If not, just let me know. So, we call this strategy the 5K strategy. We probably have to come out with a better name for it. I accept suggestions, by the way. So, if you have a better idea, just send me an email to aldo.evolutiontradingprotocols.com with your suggestion and it will be considered. Now let's review the strategy. Most of you know the strategy pretty well, but let's review it. Let's assume that we're looking for a selling opportunity. Okay, first, we can identify it right here. It happened yesterday. First, we need price to touch or penetrate one of the boundaries of the Kellner channel. In this particular case, since we're looking for a selling opportunity, it needs to penetrate the upper uh, channel, right? Two, then we have to make sure that the percentage R indicator is coming down from above the reference line. The reference line is uh, this purple line that you see here. And the indicator must be coming down from above, not from below. Okay, so in this case, perfect. Now, those two steps 
are only the setup. Without the trigger, we may be lost. I'll show you how. Suppose that instead of selling here, we're buying. And we're looking for the same kind of setup, okay? We need a price to have penetrated the, the, the channel. Okay, here it penetrated it. Here too, here too, right? So we also need the percentage R to be coming uh, up from below. Well, here it's doing that. Yet, market continue going down. What is it missing? Well, that is the last step, which is to wait for the oil barrel to align colors for error, bars, and footprint. So you can see we were here, and we're waiting for the red arrow, red bar, and this moving average we call footprint, all to turn red. Now with that, we have the trigger. Really easy. Now here's the question. Really the setup is, it couldn't be simpler. Now here's the question. What do we do with all those trend concepts we just spoke about? Can they help us uh, in trading the F500? You bet they can, because depending upon what we identify, we could use the EVO breakout technique, the 5K strategy, or any of the other scalping strategies that we have talked about in the past using our channels and combinations. Now, let's say we decided to use the 5K strategy. The 5K strategy needs, by definition, a turning point, a reversal in the market for it to work. If otherwise, it wouldn't work, right? So it is, by definition, a reversal trade. So if we want to sell here, the market has been going up and actually has been making a series of higher highs and higher lows. So the market here is has to to make a reversal. So this is a reversal trade. Now, can we do something that helps us identify reversal trades? Indeed, we can. We need reversal signals. We need reversal patterns. We need to check for divergences with whatever indicators we use. Now, because there are so many of those possibilities, let's just examine a couple of those so you could make a killing with your setups because when your setups are really good and you get your trigger entry, really the strategy is absolutely fantastic. Well, as you can see that right there yesterday. I'll show you why it was so fantastic. So I'll give you one example of um, reversal signals. If you have seen some of my videos, you have probably noticed that I use very often the parabolics are. Stop and reverse. The parabolics are, it's an indicator developed by Wells Wilder to spot potential reversals. Actually, the SAR name comes from stop and reverse. Another use of the parabolics are is to trail stops, and I actually like that very much. Now, let's see here. See the parabolics are, which is this, um, this, uh, are these dots here, these golden dots here. See how it was going below the bars, but suddenly changes from below to the top? Well, that you get your first early signal. There is a potential reversal. Now, is that a trigger? Not at all. Is that a setup? Not yet. Now, why do I use the parabolic are? Well, because it gives me an early indication that the market is about to reverse. If the other conditions that we just mentioned, what are those conditions? The price have penetrated in the, the channel. The Williams percentage R is going in the direction that we need. So if they are there, we know we have a setup. A setup with a potential to reverse. But again, we still have to wait for the trigger. What is the trigger here? The oil barrel. Uh, I must say that I also use the uh, stop and reverse indicator because I like trailing the stop with it. It's very effective. One of the most common and most reliable reversal patterns 
is also the one popularized by Edwards and McGee in their classic technical analysis book. I'm referring to the head and shoulders pattern. I'm sure you have heard of such pattern because, well, it is one of the most popular ones that most traders speak about, and I also made a video to explain how to trade it. Now, let's see what a head and shoulders pattern is and how we can take advantage of this pattern using the old barrel and F500. Uh, let me write, it's easier to write in my other platform because let's put it here. Have some place to write. Okay, so what is the head and shoulders? Well, head and shoulders uh, consist of three elements. A rally followed by a small correction. That would be the left shoulder. A second advanced that reaches higher than the left shoulder and is followed by a minor recession that takes prices below the high of the left shoulder. So it has to be below here. So if it is here, it's not valid. If it is here, it's not valid. It has to be below that. And finally, we need another rally, let's say from here, with um, another rally with the characteristic that it fails to reach the high, the previous high of the head. So that would be the left shoulder, the right shoulder. So basically what we have here is, let's put it this way, let's call this um, left shoulder, let's call this head, and let's call this right shoulder. You will see in a moment how useful this pattern will be when you are trading the uh, 5K strategy. So beyond those three elements, we have what is uh, known as the neckline. The neckline connects the bottoms of the, of the corrections between the left and right shoulder, so between here and here. There we have what is considered a neck line. That would be the neck line. Okay, now, the neck line provide us with several important things. One is a safe entry point. Where do we enter when the neck line is broken? And it also provides us with a minimum target measurement. How do we know where to aim? Well, it's very simple. Uh, we measure the head, the distance from the head to the neckline. Okay? And we simply take that distance and project it from the breaking point of the neckline. If it broke here, if it broke here from there. You know, just from the place where it broke, where it crossed, the price crossed the neckline. And then we have our first minimal target. So that means that if we have this pattern and we are able to enter it, and we have a good trigger, we know that at least we're going to reach this price here, which is equal to the head, to the distance from the head to the neckline. Now, I'm going to show you these patterns in the 5K so you can see them in action. This one, left shoulder, right here, then we have the decline, then we have the rally again for a head, and then we have the decline, and then we have another rally right here for the right shoulder. And what do we get out of that? Well, when it broke, we got all this move down. This is the magic of the uh, head and shoulders. Did we accomplish our minimum target? You bet we did, and even more. And actually, I should say something interesting here. Typically, if you take instead of a line, instead of, let's say that we don't use uh, this, and instead of, of a line, we use parallel lines, which is something very useful. And you connect the, the same places the bottom from the left shoulder to the head and the bottom from the head to the right shoulder. 
and then you project that from the rep shoulder, then you typically get the resistance for the right shoulder either at the extreme of the channel or in the middle line. And you can see that right here working beautifully. Notice how we have here. This would be the neckline, right? The low here with the low here connected with a, with a, a, the channel projected from the left shoulder. And what do we get? Right here we got the resistance, perfect base of resistance for the right shoulder. And here we got the breaking of it. So when I was trading this yesterday, I, treat, I treated it as a head and shoulders. Let's Let's look of other head and shoulder pattern that perhaps look uh, much easier to identify. Here's a beautiful one because notice, well, notice the left shoulder here, the head and the right shoulder. Again, notice how the neckline, or actually we use the channel here, serve as perfect place of resistance for the right shoulder. And notice what happened. Price gapped from there. So. That tells you the, the, the magic of this pattern, really. Let's see a couple more. We have a couple more here. Here's another one that is not that easy to identify because the, the right shoulder is very high, but it still, it still follows the, the rules. Here's the left shoulder. Here we have the decline. Here we have the head. The next decline goes below the left shoulder, and there we have the right shoulder, which again found, found uh, resistance in that area of the middle line and from there notice how even though we are already in the middle of the channel this is a perfect setup because we are waiting for the for for the neckline to break and what do we get that tells us there that that's a perfect setup we get the red arrow we get the red bar we get the red footprint in other words we identify the setup and now we get the perfect uh, trigger to achieve the minimum target. Did we achieve it? You bet we did. Okay, let's see another one. I believe I marked another one here. Here, here's another one. A left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Again, notice how when we um, put a neckline here and trace a parallel line from that line, we encounter resistance right in the middle. And from there, we had the perfect entry once more, even though we are no longer at the extreme of the channel. We're in the middle, but we have all the triggers there, the red arrow, the red bar, the red footprint, they are all there, triggering a wonderful entry there. Okay, now you may say, but Aldo, there are not so many uh, heads and shoulder patterns. Are there any other reversal pat patterns that we may follow? Uh, yes, indeed. And this is just one of them that can help you immensely using your, your OB, oil barrel strategy. Now, there are some other uh, patterns that are very common. We're all very familiar with bar reversal patterns, right? In fact, actually, a couple of years ago, I taught so many of them that I, I actually went through the trouble of automating them, a bunch of them for you. Sadly, no one, <laughs> no one paid attention to them, so I took them out of the package. But they are my most favorite trade setups for reversal trades. And remember, the F, uh, the F, no, the 5K is a reversal trade. By definition, we need the market to reverse from wherever it's going. Once it reaches that, uh, that extreme, like for instance, in this particular case, it reached that extreme, but it did not reverse. So this just uh, gives us uh, the idea of there is something coming, but it's not ready. You don't have the trigger. It kept going. And well, now you got the trigger. Look at this, the blue, bar, the blue arrow, the blue bar, and the blue footprint. And that happened just this morning, well, not this morning, I mean the European money morning. I was following this. OK, so I'll show you here one or two of those um, bar reversal patterns that are extremely help, helpful to keep present when you're using your F500 or when you're using the, the 
how is it called? A 5K strategy, okay? So, let's, I'm going to show you, yeah, I have them here. I must admit, admit that this type of um, bar patterns, they are much more reliable in larger time frames. I'm, show, I'm showing you a monthly chart, but then I'll show you them uh, in, in the 5K chart. And in fact, um, we managed to identify them in large time frames. Um, when we managed to identify them, we get those huge reversals that, that last long, long time. I'm going to show you here the simple, single key reversal. Okay? Oh, but by the way, even though I'm showing you a monthly chart, we can also use them with small time frames, as I'm going to show you in a moment. Just let me uh, let me show you the effectiveness of them. And one of these patterns is what I call a double close key reversal pattern. And let's see what exactly is a double close key reversal pattern. But of course, first let's understand what a single key reversal pattern is. It basically consists of two bars where the second bar makes a new extreme. In this, this case, you know, these are two bars, and the second bar makes a new extreme. In this particular case, a higher high, because uh, assuming that we are in an uptrend, but it closes below the close, it closes right here, below the close of the previous bar. That is a reversal pattern that typically sends the market down. That's called bearish single key reversal pattern. A double, well, before the double, a, a bullish single key reversal pattern is when the market is coming down. It makes a new extreme in this particular time, a new low, yet it closes above the previous close, and that typically sends the market up. That's a bullish single key reversal. Now, a double, a double close a key reversal pattern is exactly the same, except that it is formed by three bars, and the close of the third bar, which makes a new extreme, like you can see here, in this particular case, a higher high in an uptrend, and it closes below the previous two bars, the previous two closes, so that typically sends the market down and that is called a bearish outside bar double close key reversal. Outside bar because this bar has a, a higher high uh, than this one, and it also is, the extreme is below the low of this bar. So that is why it's called an outside bar. Again, this is a pattern that is truly significant in daily, weekly, or monthly charts. And it's even more powerful when the reversal bar is also an outside bar. Not always have to be an outside bar, as I'm going to show you in a moment. You know, an outside bar, as I said, um, means that the high and the low of the current bar are higher and lower than the high and the low of the previous bar. Now, I have here some good examples of that. See, the market is going up here, and it makes here a higher high than this one, yet it closes below this one. And notice that it's also an outside bar. And notice what happened. This is a monthly chart. Well, this sent prices from 1550 all the way down to 650. So that was huge. Now, notice this single key reversal pattern. You know, the market is coming down and made a new low, yet it closed above the previous close. And that sent the market uh, up for well, actually already six years, right? Then we have, <clears throat> obviously, we have different phases of the trend here, right? We have the first phase, the accumulation phase, and then we have the secondary trend right here. But notice how the secondary trend right here ended with a double close key reversal. What happened? Notice that 
this bar made a new low, yet it closed above the previous bar close and even the previous bar close. So that's a double close key reversal. It's not an outside bar, but it doesn't matter. It's still a double close key reversal. And that, again, sent the market high. The next correction, we had an outside bar, double close key reversal. Notice that this is the low of this bar and the high of this bar are beyond the high of the previous and the low of the previous bar. So you can see that even though it made a low, um, another low here, made another extreme, so to speak, and then close above the previous close of the neck of the previous bar and the close of the the second bar before it. So we had an outside bar, double close key reversal, and that worked again to send the market up. And in this particular case, we have single key reversal where the market made a new extreme to the low side, but it closed above the previous close. And this particular case, it made a new extreme, also a new low, but it closed above the previous close. And notice what happened, few, few uh, weeks ago, we made a new low a few days ago actually we made a new low but we made a single key reversal here notice that we close above the close of the previous bar which means that perhaps the top is not in place as uh, so many people have been talking about the top being in place if you see my labels here you can see that i am considering this like the top of only the third wave and if you see the projections, amazingly enough, the top here corresponds exactly to the tick to the 4.236 uh, projection of the distance traveled by one, wave one. Okay, now I'm going to show you, that was with the ES. Now I'm going to show you the Euro. I show this to market simply because our markets are most people uh, trade. Notice key reversals here. New low close above the previous close, and notice what happened. This is a weekly chart. In this particular case, another new low, it closed above the previous one, and notice what happened. In this particular case, we have a, a, an outside bar that made a new low and closed above the close of the previous two bars. So we have an outside double um, key reversal. And this particular one, we also have an outside bar that closed below the previous not two, but three um, uh, previous bars. And here also notice what happened with, when that happened. And remember that this is a weekly chart. We are talking here from 145 all the way down to 120. So those are major moves. In this particular case, we made another low and we close above the previous two high, two lows, two bars, and again, send the market all the way there. And notice what happened precisely before the, the huge decline that, that we had last year. What happened? Well, we made a double key reversal. Notice how we made a new high here, but when it closed, it closed below, actually with, a, with an outside bar, it closed below the previous one, two, three, four, uh, five uh, bars uh, closes. So that gave you a clue of what happened. Yeah? Now, how can we apply this to our strategy? Well, remember how I showed you the, this uh, trade yesterday that worked so beautifully, and I said I'm going to explain to you later why. Well, first of all, we have a head and shoulder pattern, which is a reversal pattern. And secondly, guess what? We have a double close key reversal as well. Notice how we made a new high with this bar, right? And it's an outside bar, and yet it closed below this bar, which closed up here, and this bar, which closed up here as well. I must say that right when that was happening, I was considering, oh no, it's going to continue, because notice what happened before. You see this arrow here? What happened is that we actually had that, uh, that pattern there. We had another bar, which was an outside bar, that closed below the previous two bars. You see, we have a double close key reversal right here. But what was missing? Ah, the trigger was missing. So did we fall under the trap of thinking that only 
a, 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 a pattern, a reversal pattern, could uh, could help us? Well, no, because we have the oil barrel, so we had to wait. And the good news was when it made another high, and it gave me this surprise, a closing below the previous two bars. So that was a real treat. And okay, so here we have a single key reversal. Notice how the bar went higher than the previous bar, but but close below the previous bar. It's not an outside bar, but it's a single key reversal. And from there, we have we can have confidence that this setup could be a really good trade. This is a particular trade that went from uh, almost 53, let's say, let's say 53 for it's easy to say, to 51.50. So it's a dollar 50. Were you going to take all the all the money there? Probably not. But you have a 150 dollar decline there. And yesterday, what did we have? We had from, let's say, from 52.80 to all the way to 58, let's say, so it's another $2. So let's see another pattern. How often are they? Double close key reversal. Again, notice how market went up, made another high, made a, an outside bar, close below the previous two closes and what happened we got our trigger and look what happened huge trade to the downside here we have a double close key reversal and look what happened okay a very nice trade to the upside when we got our trigger and well actually we could continue seeing uh, many of these patterns um, here you have another double close key reversal another double close key reversal and you can even see key reversals that don't work, but then again, don't have the trigger. Notice how this one is a single key reversal, but they the, the made a lower low here. It closed above the previous close, but what happened? We didn't have a blue arrow. We didn't have a blue bar. We didn't have a blue uh, footprint. So we were safe. We were protected here because uh, we, we had our trigger. Okay, I think uh, with this, I have pretty much covered everything that I wanted to cover today. And I could cover a little bit more, but I think it has been too dense. I think it, there's too much material there for you. So instead, let me answer your questions if you have any. I'm waiting here to see if you are, um, if you have any questions. And I'll be more than happy to answer them. I see no questions coming in. Uh, thank you, John. I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed the presentation. Um, yes, uh, Larry asked um, if I said that the third wave of the Elliot is the um, EVO breakout. And actually with the EVO breakout, that's what we attempt to capture. Not always we can capture them, but that's what we attempt. The EVO breakout, let me show you what the EVO breakout is. Simply, what we do is that we measure the bar. I'll show you how. We measure the bar. Uh, and we add 50% of the bar up and 50% down. What is that? Well, the 50% up is to trigger our entry and the 50% down is to place our stop. So when we have a bar like this, for example, we enter uh, here, we call this the breakout bar. We add the 50% to the breakout bar. We enter in the middle of this bar and we place a stop right here. Then we um, trail the stop with whatever system of trailing the stop, I use the, the um, parabolic are. Okay, so what happened is that what we're trying to capture here are those breakouts. And breakouts are typically third waves. Here, we also have the same breakout. You can see, for instance, how we could um, measure this bar, which is the first uh, breakout bar and we put 50% on top and 50% at the bottom. And there our, our entry is triggered at 2055. Okay, so we 
enter here, we put our stop right there. We trigger we the the trade was triggered uh, when the price came to this level. So we enter there and start trading our stop. And typically those are wonderful swings. Uh, this is this particular chart I'm showing you is for the for the uh, what is it called? The, yes, but you can also use exactly the same thing uh, with the CL with when you are looking for when you are capturing um, a major break, major breaks. Like okay, here is a wonderful example. Let's say that we take this. Okay, let me put it this way. Let's let's make a great application here. Okay, notice this. We see price moving down. Okay, it's price moving down here. And now we see it's moving up, but we don't know if this is a correction or not. So what we could do is that we could actually uh, put a, a parallel line there. If the, if the price is contained within parallel lines, then we can consider that a correction and then use the next um, break of these uh, parallel lines as a potential breakout. So there we have the breakout bar. We measure from the top to the bottom and we add 50% on top and 50% on bottom. Notice that the, the, end, the trigger here was a 57, uh, say 57.25. We enter there with a stop here, 57.87, and we wrote all this, all this uh, move to the downside. Notice what happened here again. We have a small move to the upside. Is that a, is that a, a, a motive wave? Is that a, a, an impulsive wave? Can we count five there? Absolutely not. Uh, in fact, can we put a trend channel there and contain the price within the trend channel? Yes. Now, if we were to use, for instance, this, Oops. If we were to use this and this, could we contain this move within parallel lines? No, it breaks out of parallel lines. In fact, one way to know that we are actually in a big phase of the market is when, when market breaks parallel lines. So that's a, a, a wonderful way to, to, to decide when they are we have a, a major phase of the market. Look and look at here. Is this a, an impulsive move? Not at all. It can be contained within parallel lines again. So that's what helps you. And in those occasions, occasions like this one, you can use your EVO breakout and take huge, um, huge profits from huge swings. Did I answer your question, uh, Larry? All right, any more questions, guys? Thank you, Larry. Okay, no more questions. Well, I hope this presentation helped you. It helped you understand better how to apply your indicators because you have within yourself a tremendous uh, tool that proper use could make uh, amazing profits, but truly amazing profits. So. It just you just have to to apply it properly, and in this particular case, well, basically recognizing notice something just by just by using the the by recognizing that the 5K strategy is a reversal uh, trade strategy, then you know what to look for. What are we looking for? Well, we look, we look for for um, reversal patterns. We look for uh, head and shoulder patterns. We look for divergences, and so forth and so on. Okay, guys, with this, I will uh, farewell everybody and wish you the best uh, possible trade session today and in the next in the next few days. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you later.